Fifty years ago today, Boston City Hall was officially dedicated, and in the half century since, the building has been both celebrated and slandered, called everything from masterpiece to monstrosity. So how's it stacking up on its golden anniversary? Edgar B. Herrick III from WGBH's Curiosity Desk was wondering just that. The site of City Hall elicits reactions as strong as, well, concrete. For the last 34 years, I've been walking by this building. And what do you think? I say, how they build that in a beautiful city like Boston. Looks like a jail, maybe yes. a little bit. Uh, that's what I was thinking, actually. Kind of um, empty and not very colorful. Not very welcoming. Yeah. Uh, so you love it? Well, <laughs> it's a little shui I, mean, I don't a little know. Color. It's a little sprucing. Yes. Something like, you know, a little bit more appealing to the eye. Opinions like these are not hard to come by. In 2013, California Home and Design placed our city hall on its list of 25 buildings to demolish right now. And for years, it's been a staple on lists of the world's ugliest buildings. And yet... It will go down in history as one of the exemplar uh, works of the 20th century. And Architect 20th, Chris Grimley is among a growing number of architects worldwide who are unabashed fans of the 20th century style known as brutalism. And for devotees of brutalism, Boston's City Hall is their Taj Mahal. What is brutalism? The quick definition of brutalism is, uh, well, there's no real quick definition, but if you wanted to pigeonhole it. It's a building made out of concrete that's very expressive. In the mid-20th century, this embrace of concrete was a reaction to the rising popularity of steel and glass. Skyscrapers conceal what's happening inside. A brutalist building wears it proudly on its sleeve. So right here we see Boston City Hall sort of etched right into the concrete. This is the City Hall Chamber. That is City Hall Chambers, yes. It's all visible from the outside. The mayor's office, the staircases inside. Those slats dividing the windows, they house the pipes and wiring. The building's very shape is defined by its purpose. Initially appears as a very monolithic thing, uh, starts to become a very transparent structure. Boston City Hall established a whole new archetype, a public swimming hall in Norway, a Philharmonic Hall in Kyrgyzstan, even Israel's parliament building are all modeled after our center of city government. And to be clear, the original does have its fans outside the world of architects. I think it's cool. It's not Boston at all, in my opinion. It's very different than the majority of the buildings in Boston, but I think that makes it cool. And it's that attitude that Chris grimly predicts will be widely held by the time City Hall celebrates its 75th anniversary. Edgar B. Herrick III joins me now. Hey, Edgar, how are you? Pretty good, Jim. How are you? Okay, so maybe it's an architectural masterpiece. Yeah. Not to me, no. I should say. But still, still not a fan. Even those who believe that, there's still a lot of problems with the building, yes? Oh, certainly. I mean, the, the building does have its issues, and I think everybody has said that. I think one of the other things that happens is people conflate the issues of the building with the issues of the plaza. And I think they're related, obviously, but they're separate things. I mean... They're related because they're both horrible. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, but... <laughs> But, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about uh, upgrades to the plaza that will be happening in the coming years. And everybody seems to believe that if the plaza is a little bit more welcoming, it will somehow make the building come to life. Did you speak to the, one of the original designers? One of the original thing? architects. Oh, He's that's still around, and which what's is his, great. How's he reacting to the criticism? You know, it's interesting. I spent a little bit of time with him uh, just last week. They threw a birthday party, a 50th birthday party, essentially, uh -huh. at uh, City Hall. And I sat down with him for about 10 minutes, and we just chatted. And, you know, the first thing I asked him, I, I was like, are you just sort of steady as she goes, or do you hear the <laughs> criticism, you know, in terms of things like, this is the ugliest building ever, et cetera? And uh, he was amazing about it. He was like, look, I'm human, first of all. He said I was – he's a British guy, so he said I was delighted when they say they liked it, and I was chagrined when people say they don't. But crucially, he said the most important thing for an architect is that your building be noticed. And he said, for better or worse, whatever you think about it, it's noticed. One last quick final. Am I not right that when Marty Walsh ran for mayor the first time, True. I saw a big Herald front page story that he was going to rip down the thing? What yeah. happened to that? Well, he has definitely fully come around. And he has said in his time as mayor, he's really, I think, turned a corner on this building. And now the folks who love the building and are saying we need to renovate, we need to make upgrades, uh, they feel like they have a partner in Marty Walsh. So he's come around. Edgar, well done. Nice to see you. Really Thanks, appreciate Jeff. Edgar B. Herrick the third.